Hey, this is Kyle Grossmiller with Pure Storage. I'm a principal cloud technical specialist. And in this demo video, we're going to show you how to deploy Cloud Block Store in Azure. Um, this is an updated deployment video. Uh, we've made some recent changes to Cloud Block Store. Uh, and we'll walk through what some of those are. Um, to get started, the only thing I've done is I've created a resource group prior to the start of this video. And the first thing I'm going to do is create an Azure virtual network otherwise known as an Azure VNet. So we'll give it our, our name here, which is VNet demo dash CBS. Um, you can optionally deploy any security measures that you need, but for demo purposes, I'm keeping this simple so I don't have any selected. What we're gonna do next is add four different subnets. Cloud Block Store uses and consumes four, four uh, subnets for four different services. Uh, you can put every service on a single subnet if you want, um, but for keeping services uh, separate from one another, it is a best practice to use for unique subnets. We've created system, management, replication, and iSCSI. Of these four subnets, the system subnet, which I will show after this uh, section, that this one the system subnet does require an outbound internet connection. And then last but not least, you can also create a virtual network gateway. This is useful if you're using an integrated solution, something like Azure VMware solution. So we've got our four subnets created, and now we'll create our Azure virtual network. It typically only takes about a minute for this to create. When the deployment is done, um, the next step that we will do is create what's known as a NAT gateway. Um, a NAT gateway is what will enable our system subnet to have an outbound internet connection. Uh, and th this is so that Cloud Block Store can register its license against Pure One, and Cloud Block Store can also surface metrics and utilization to Pure One alongside of any flash array, flash blade, or portworks implementations that you might have. Uh, things like Azure firewalls, uh, third-party firewalls also can be used to get the system subnet and outbound connection. Um, I've created part of the NAT gateway. Um, now I'm going to associate this NAT gateway with our system subnet. And again, this is just so it can get an outbound internet connection so that CBS can communicate with Pure One. NAT gateway also takes a minute or two to deploy. And once that deploys, the next step um, from a networking perspective is we do need to add a couple of service endpoints to our system subnet and optionally to our replication subnet. So here's our system subnet. We can see that we've associated it with our NAT gateway, um, but we're going to add three service endpoints to it. Cosmos DB, Key Vault, and then Microsoft.Storage. So this basically enables this subnet to be able to consume these native Azure services. Optionally, if you want to use CloudSnap, which enables you to replicate pure storage snapshots to Azure Blob Storage, you will also need to associate Microsoft.Storage service endpoint to the replication subnet, which I'm doing here. So that's the setup from our virtual network perspective. Um, the other kind of new thing relative to how you used to be able to deploy Azure in, in Azure is uh, we are going to create a managed identity and I'll walk through how to create it and why we need it uh, right now. Um, so essentially the managed identity enables us to join a service endpoint to a subnet. So we're gonna create, uh, first we're gonna create this managed identity. We'll create a custom role. And then we'll associate that custom role with our VNet via this managed identity. So again, this takes another minute to deploy. We can see there's my managed ID. Um, and at the resource group level, next thing I'm going to do is add a custom role. I'm adding a custom role because I want to keep this as least privileged as possible. So I'll call this custom role cbs-custom-role-demo. And then I'm going to give it the single permission that we need, um, which this is all available on our support site, which is going to be linked in the description of this video. You can see we've got this join via service endpoint action. This is the per permission that is required for the 
system subnet to be able to join uh, via, via the service endpoint. So click next, and then we can click through here again and just keep all defaults here. And this creates our custom role. So now we're gonna tie the custom role to the managed ID to our Azure virtual network. So if we go up to overview, go to our Azure VNet, go to access control. Here we're going to add a role assignment to it. So I'm looking up the custom role that I just created, CBS custom dash role dash demo, there's that. Um, I'm going to add a managed identity to it, the managed identity that I created two steps ago. It's a user assigned managed identity. I'm just gonna put in the name. And it should auto populate here in a second. Yep, there it is. And now I'm just gonna review and assign. And now my managed ID has the capability to do this action. And you'll, I'll show you in the CBS deployment itself where the managed ID comes into play. Okay, so we've got our role assignment done. We've now done all of the prerequisites required to deploy CBS. So next we'll actually go into the marketplace and, we're and we will search for Pure Cloud Block Store. Now, if we scroll down here, we can see there's a few different versions of the product available. We just recently came out with 6.8. Select my region. Um, we have four different models. We always recommend MP2 R2 when possible. Uh, zone is your availability zone. So if you're using this product with something like Azure VMware Solution, you'll want to pick the same AZ as your AVS instance. Um, give it a name. I'm giving it the Pure Storage Company domain name. We do have a free trial license available, so you can see that license key at the top there. Um, then I'm giving it my application name on the bottom. Uh, the application name cannot have hyphens or dashes or special characters. So here's where I'm gonna grab my managed identity I created earlier. So I click in on the managed identity, go to properties, and then grab the ID of the ID, <laughs> and then uh, paste it in here. Next, uh, the network, the Azure virtual network that we created earlier, we'll start to populate that here. Again, the system subnet has that NAT gateway associated with it, so that's how we're able to get an outbound internet connection. Um, and then I'm just picking down the list of all of the different individual services that I created. Again, you can use a single Dash 24 network for all this. And I believe Cloud Blocks for today requires approximately 16 or 17 individual IP addresses for all four services. Optionally tag it. We do want to enable JIT access. Agree to the T's and C's, and then we are off to the races in terms of deployment. CBS takes about 15 minutes or so um, to go from me clicking the create button to having a working array. Um, we'll kind of, we'll pause it here. I don't want to make you guys sit and wait through all <laughs> all 15 minutes of this. But if we actually click in, we can see there's our managed application, and you can actually follow along with the deployment of CBS by clicking in on the managed resource groups, going to settings, and then deployments. So we can see it's iterating through and deploying all of the different native Azure components. Um, I'm kind of pausing it here and moving forward. There's CT0, which is your controller VM0. And it's got some additional network services and things of that nature to assign to it. And again, we'll just skip ahead here. CT0 extension, this is where it's actually registering against Pure One. Now we're deploying CT1 as we continue to skip ahead, CT1 extension. And then we can see our deployment succeeded. So when you actually click in on the managed application upon successful deployment, you'll see the pure storage logo. And then if you go into parameters and outputs, this will tell you some very useful information. Um, where is it deployed? Um, and particularly, you know, here's my floating management IP address. 
So if I deploy an Azure VM on that network, I can navigate to that URL and I'm good to go. Thanks a lot for watching the demo video. A lot more to be found on that support site down there, and we will see you next time.